I went and pre-ordered them because those phones were superior than my iPhone. But after diving deeper, I found two major flops of those phones that made me cancel my purchase in the last moment. If video content creation is important to you, if using your phone for several years is important to you, watch that video till the end. Hey there, my name is Gabriel and I'm an Apple fanboy, but even as a fanboy, I can still admire what Samsung achieved with their flagship phones. Some of the features are really much better than the iPhone. So let's start with the things that are better than the iPhone and I really wish to have them on my iPhone. The first thing is the wallet and they did two big improvements. The first one is the RFID cards. That's a feature I'm waiting for the last two years and I still don't have it with my iPhone. The second big improvement is that you can use the Samsung wallet as a crypto wallet. I think that feature will be really helpful to a lot of people. You don't have to explain them how to use MetaMask, now you can do it with your phone and it's really handy because you always have it with you. The security is still a huge question, we'll see how it will work. The second thing that really impressed me with that phone was the video stabilization. I would say that it's mostly as good as the iPhone, but iPhone has still a little bit of advantage in the video stabilization world, but Samsung is mostly there, it's maybe like 90-95% as good as the iPhone one. Three is the low light performance. This year Samsung really killed it. The S21 Ultra had horrible low light performance compared to the iPhone, but the 22 Ultra is on another level. The low light performance is mostly as good as the iPhone. When I say mostly, I mean maybe 5-10% the iPhone is better, but the difference is so close. But Samsung has one feature that the iPhone doesn't have and that's are the horrible reflections you're getting with the iPhone. When you film at night with your iPhone, the lenses are flaring horribly. Samsung has really better coating on their lenses and they prevent that flaring. At night that's a huge advantage and if you measure both phones, I would take a phone that performs like 5-10% worse but doesn't have the flaring. So Samsung here is better than the iPhone. The fourth huge improvement this year is the Pro Mode. Now all the lenses support the Pro Mode, even the two telephoto lenses. Last year you could use only two of the lenses in the Pro Mode and that was really pissing as a content creator because that's limiting you so much. The other huge improvement with the lenses is the quality and the color science. With the S21 Ultra, the ultra wide and the wide angle lens had different quality and color balance than the telephoto lenses. And when you are creating a video, that was very prominent when you edited it. It, it was feeling like you were shooting on two different uh, cameras. From all the footage I saw from S22 Ultra and S22, I haven't noticed that issue, so they really minimized it. Maybe it's still existing, but it's not that noticeable as the previous year. Number five is the display and this year Samsung really killed it. They have amazing display that goes to 120 Hz, but it can go down to 1 Hz. That saves a lot of battery. This year they reduced the battery, but they advertise it that they are squeezing more performance from the phone. Most probably the better performance is due to the better processor and the better display refresh rates. Now the most important improvement of the display is the brightness. When you're outside and it's very bright, Samsung have a special mode that will boost the display and will make everything brighter. iPhones are still dimming the displays when it's hot outside. That means that when I'm flying my drones, I'm constantly having issues seeing the monitor. Let's talk about photography. Hands down, Samsung has the better photo camera, better details, better resolution. But straight out of the box, iPhone is producing the more pleasing image to people who don't care about all the photography perks. 100% Samsung is the better photo camera. If you like Photoshop in your images, better go with Samsung. You squeeze more quality out of that phone. Now, the thing that shocked me the most was the portrait mode. And not only the portrait mode, the portrait video mode. This year Samsung is like, what the heck guys, finally you brought the portrait video to the world. Last year with S21 Ultra when I was doing the test, the portrait video mode was unusable. It was pissing me how bad it is. Now when I compare the portrait video of this year, hands down, it's really good. But the iPhone has the advantage that after you film the video, you can still choose which part of the video to be in focus. So if the phone makes a mistake, I can fix it later on post-production. The next amazing feature Samsung brought to the phone is the pen. As a content creator, that is my favorite thing because I all the time have a remote control hidden in my phone. When I'm traveling around, I'm constantly taking selfies with my girlfriend and it's so annoying with the iPhone to get the perfect selfie. 
Now with the pen integrated in the phone, you can use it as the remote trigger and it's much easier to take the perfect shot. That were the good things, now let's discuss the bad things, but before that let's check the price. In Europe for the 256GB version you have to pay 1349 euros. That's 100 euros more expensive than my iPhone 13 Pro. If we compare it to the Pro Max the price is identical. But with the iPhone 13 I'm getting mostly the same features as the iPhone 13 Pro Max, just the display is bigger and a bit, little bit better camera. So for 100 euros cheaper I'm getting the iPhone. And after we know the price now let's jump to the first thing that is really destroying the whole experience with that phone. Samsung will support that phone only for 4 generations, that means 4 years. When, you, when I buy so expensive phone I want to know that I can use it for a long time, that's a lot of money. In my country those are two average monthly salaries, that's a lot of money, I don't want to throw that phone only after 4 years of usage. I'm a person who is upgrading his phones very often because I'm in the content area, if I wasn't filming my YouTube videos I wouldn't update my phones that often. So what I usually do with my phones is to give them to my brother, to my sister, to my mom. iPhone 6 still supports the latest iOS. That's around 7-8 years of support. So with iPhone you get double the support. That means that if you want to upgrade your phone you can give it to somebody of your family and the phone will work perfectly fine. My brother is still using my iPhone 7, my sister has iPhone 11, the mother of my girlfriend is using our iPhone 6 and everything works perfectly fine and the ecosystem, even that it, some things are really restricted, works really well. So that's the first huge red flag for me that they'll provide the Android support only for 4 years. The second thing is the third party support. Here I'm speaking about Instagram. If you're a serious content creator you still can't ignore Instagram. YouTube and other platforms are more popular and are paying you better but if Instagram is important to you still all Android phones have really bad experience with Instagram. What Samsung did really smart is to partner with Google and Snapchat so YouTube will work really good on that phone. But the other thing with the third party supports are all professional applications like drone applications, gimbal applications, um, Filmic Pro like camera applications. They don't work that reliable as they work on iPhone. So as a whole package iPhone still gives you better value for money. Number 3 is the camera. This year Samsung really killed it. They came to the level of the iPhone. Now you have two flagship phones that are going neck to neck. But Samsung caught with the previous year iPhone. This year there is a new iPhone going out and the rumors for the camera updates are crazy. So if the rumors are right the iPhone 14 will be one or two generations ahead of the Samsung. So I really prefer to wait for around 5-6 months and see what Apple will release before I buy the phone. Because if it's true what is coming out there iPhone will be much better than the Samsung. Those were all my points, hope they were helpful, see you in the next one, bye!